So the most recent episode of The Mandalorian gave us a closer look at the Imperial Remnant and how exactly it functions, and it showed us a little bit of a ominous look at how organized they are, so I figured today we could take a closer look at the Imperial Remnant itself, discuss how organized they are, and perhaps what the future of the faction looks like. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So, the Imperial Remnant are the main antagonists of the TV show The Mandalorian, and they're playing a much larger role in this era of Star Wars storytelling than originally thought. It was originally painted by Disney when they took over. The Empire fell into obscurity pretty quickly after the end of the Battle of Endor. But what we're seeing with The Mandalorian and other shows taking place in that era is that the Imperial Remnant is given a much larger role. But let's talk today about what the Imperial Remnant looks like at this point in history. After all, we just got some pretty major clues as to sort of the role they're filling in the galaxy and where they are as a faction. Before we go any further, I will throw out that there will be spoilers for last week's episode of The Mandalorian. So, what is the Imperial Remnant? Well, I'm just going to give a, a real quick rundown. The Imperial Remnant is what's left of the Imperial military. It's a lot of Imperial warlords and Imperial officers who feel like they can carry on the Empire's legacy or are trying to hold on to power for themselves. Mostly trying to hold on to power for themselves. There's a lot of egotistical activities in the Imperial Remnant, but... It is basically what's left of the Empire following their formal surrender at the end of the Battle of Jakku. The Imperial Remnant represents all that's left of the massive Imperial military, and they still pose a pretty significant threat to the New Republic and the rest of the galaxy. Now, leadership within the Imperial Remnant is scattered and confused and often self-contradictory and even self-hostile. We see that the Imperial Remnant in general is run by a bunch of different Imperial officers or warlords or moths, whatever you choose to call them, each one almost running their own mini-empire that are often at war with one another. Which is why it's a big deal when they're unified, because collectively they actually are a fairly powerful faction. The Empire was massive, its military was incredibly capable, and even a small fraction of that is a force to be reckoned with. So when you look at these Imperial warlords as individual forces, they are relatively weak, but when you look at them together as one faction, they become a pretty substantial threat to the New Republic. But thankfully for the New Republic, they don't really operate as a single faction. They are kind of all over the place and really fighting themselves most of the time, which is why it's such a major development when we get characters like Thrawn entering the picture in this time period. In Legends, Thrawn unified the Imperial Warlords and formed a unified faction to lead a campaign against the New Republic, a campaign that was nearly successful. In Canon, he will likely fill a very similar role. We see these Imperial Warlords actually preparing for the reemergence of Thrawn and his return to the galaxy as a sort of unifying factor. And it seems like the beginnings of this unification are already in place, with the Imperial Warlords coming together to form a council to discuss future affairs. By the way, this council does include several notable names, but most notably is Captain Peleon, who was the last leader of the Imperial Remnant in Legends. But anyway, the Imperial Remnant does seem to be rather disjointed and scattered, but they do have some really significant capabilities under their belts. Well, let's start with the obvious one. It's a lot of leftover military equipment from the Galactic Empire. The Galactic Empire built this massive military apparatus, and it didn't just disappear when they surrendered. A lot of it ended up in the hands of these warlords. So, for example, Moff Gideon's Arkatan's class cruiser is likely a holdover from the days of the Galactic Empire that he managed to maintain control over. And I would wager that his cruiser isn't the largest thing in the Imperial Remnant's arsenal. If we look at them as a whole, they probably have a fairly decent number of ISDs under their command and a significant number of troops and ground equipment. But on top of that, they seem to have fairly significant industrial capacity. We see things that suggest that various worlds are starting to prepare for the needs of a wartime industry, building large factories and beginning to turn out war equipment for a new ascendant empire. This means that not only do they have the resources left over to them by the end of the Galactic Empire, but they're going to have new equipment coming in fairly soon. And we see some of this within the Mandalorian already, as newer experimental projects are becoming a reality, even after the end of the Galactic Empire. 
So what does this mean for the future of Star Wars in this era? Well, I've been saying for a while, I think we're going to get Thrawn, and that's now basically confirmed with the Ahsoka trailer and this name drop in the last episode of The Mandalorian. So I think what we're looking at going forward is probably a much more unified Imperial Remnant that poses a much larger threat to the well-being of the galaxy. I could even see a retelling of the Thrawn series, the Heir to the Empire series, where he sort of unifies the Imperial Warlords and leads the campaign against the New Republic. So that's where I think this is going, and that's where I think we're going to end up here. Ultimately, the Imperial Remnant is getting stronger by the day, and as they unify, they are just going to become more and more of a significant force. Right now, they are scattered and easily disjointed and, and torn apart by the New Republic, but soon that may be a much more difficult task for the galactic government. But the fall of the Empire is actually something that's changed a lot throughout the course of Star Wars, and if you'd like to learn about how the Empire fell and the way it's sort of portrayed in the Disney canon, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I'd like to know whether you think the Imperial Remnant is going to end up being a significant threat to the New Republic, or do you think it's really just going to be a problem in the Outer Rim where they're operating right now? And if you have anything else you'd like to see me cover in Star Wars, you can leave it down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.